Now, you know, you've both got very, very different points mm. of view, but you both expect there to be real trouble ahead inside this Conservative government when so-called hard Brexit versus soft Brexit has to be debated and argued. How much of a political opportunity is that for each of you? Tim, first of all. I think it's a huge opportunity for us, but I think it's a massive risk for Great Britain because however you voted in the referendum, the fact that there was absolutely no plan on the table, people voted for a, a blank mm. sheet of paper. I don't think the Conservative government had any plan at all to deal with what would happen post a leave vote. And still three months on uh, post the referendum, it appears that Theresa May has no plan and she's not sharing it with us. And the difference to mm. jobs in the United Kingdom, prices on our shelves, of us being in the single market and not in the single market, market, that issue alone is of vast significance no, I agree. and none of us know. I agree, everything will get much cheaper, absolutely, because but we'll open ourselves up to the world and we can get rid of the common external tariff and buy cheaper food. You know, do you remember years ago, okay. cheap butter, lamb from New Zealand, there were lots of opportunities. Look, this idea... So, that, so the, biggest this idea. the biggest market on the planet on our doorstep is well, something we're well, going to turn I, our back I on. I tell you something, the biggest, the, the biggest Lots of your lot believe we should be in the single got, market. ...has got a real problem. Let's be absolutely clear about this blank sheet of paper. I do agree with you, there was no plan B. You know, the government did not prepare anything. Whitehall did not prepare anything, mm. which is pretty irresponsible. Mm. So it's a good job that Cameron and Osborne have gone. But the idea that people who voted for Brexit voted for a blank sheet of paper is nonsense. They voted. I don't, I don't say they that voted. Problems. They voted I'll for us yours. to take back control of our lives. They voted for us to come out of the single market. They voted for us to make our own laws and control that, our own borders. Very now, interesting. Now, now everybody, you're, everybody, you're, you're everybody, assuming everybody you know. from Boris Johnson to Kate Hoey and Frank Field mm. to, to the UKIPers, we all put that message out. So you're out. all absolutely, absolutely clear. Clearly. Everybody, clearly. everybody on out, the Leave side. We want out of the single market. Could, could, I, could I just yes, intervene for a second, gentlemen? Totally agree on and every ask, single jot and tittle. If we are opening up to the rest of the world, and I've defined liberalism as open borders for capital and people and so forth, and that great disruption which has changed the yeah. last century, mm. could we see more of it, in fact, after leaving the well, EU well, rather than less of it? Here is the nonsense. So many on the pro-EU side portray themselves as being internationalists. Actually, the European Union is effectively a protectionist club that has shut itself off from many of the emerging parts of the world. And, and, and I want Britain to be engaged on, on, if, on, a, on a global basis. That's real international. If you were an African farmer, Tim Farron, mm -hmm. you'd be nodding at what Nigel Farage was saying because they have had a very, very hard time, and many other groups, trying to import their, or export their products I think it's into the it's EU. It's absolute nonsense because what is believed, I mean, for example, across the Commonwealth, most Commonwealth heads of government, which are, of course, from countries, many of them like those that you are describing, yeah. are absolutely horrified at what the United Kingdom no, government they're not. has they're queuing stumbled, up to sign trade stumbled, deals. And stumbled, Get with it, and, come and, on. And, and that is absolutely... That's absolutely not true. We've so been, they we, are, they're we flag up. up. We flag up, Australia, Nigel. Australia, Canada. 20, yeah, so, so here we are. Uh, let's pick up <laughs> Australia. Let's settle on that. Dear, dear. A market of 20 million people, literally on the other side of the planet, in case you hadn't worked that out. No, um, no. And and a and a market literally 20 miles away yeah. across the channel with 500 million people. In I tell you what. Who so would you who would you do a I deal with, Nigel? Tell you what's so interesting. The way, the, the way that you disparage them. them as being on the other side of the world. We're leaving the European Union, we're going global. Okay. It's an exciting new future that, for that, us. I don't believe that is. I think the problem is what Nigel, uh, stan <laughs> what Nigel stands I knew this for was going to is happen. that kind of <laughs> populist... Nationalist sentiment. I believe in democracy. That I think is. I believe in democracy. I'm going to break that, up. I'm and I, to and I believe in democracy you, also. But my, my do sense you? is is that, well, and you fight for what you believe. Right. Do you, you know, do you the thing is, not, do you respect the referendum result? Right? You, you, do you respect the result? You do. Do you remember? Right. Do you respect and the one in 1975? You kept going. We are out of time. We are out of time. The conversation is carrying on. 